Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Kami, which is pronounced like how we say the letter K, and the word me in English. My pronouns are all pronouns. Today, our exploration will be self-portraits as body neutrality. We'll need something to draw off, something to draw with, and optionally, if you have it, something to see yourself with. Today, I have this handy mirror here that I like to use when I draw myself. But if you have something like a photo of yourself or a live camera on like a digital device or anything else that you might be able to see yourself with, like even a bowl of water or something like that could be really interesting. Um, because I'm joining you through video today, I'm gonna be using um, just some white paper and a marker, maybe some loose leaf paper. Um, but really anything can be used to draw on or draw with. Like I have here some uh, fabric scraps, which as you can see have been used to cut out shapes. Um, I have some scrap tissue paper um, and all sorts of a couple different shapes and colors, um, but it can be really anything from charcoal and fabrics to pencils and note newspaper to crayons and a notebook. Anything you can think of is fair game today. I want to start today uh, talking about what is body neutrality. So body neutrality is a concept um, that is discussed when we're thinking about um, our bodies. What This is why the word body is here. Um, essentially at its core, body neutrality is the idea of accepting our bodies as they are. It means acknowledging all bodies, looking at the way that they do, but also the bodies will change and age as we grow, just like other living things, for example. So we as humans, we can change from anything from our facial hair to the hair on our heads, to sometimes we get wrinkles around our eyes or our cheeks. Um, you know, we get new spots and moles. Bodies are always changing and growing and aging. Um, just like most other living things, for example, I have some trees here. You can see how trees grow and they change shape and size, and it's all just a normal part of existing on this planet, which is pretty cool. Practicing body neutrality allows us to feel, well, it can allow us to feel more at peace and at home with our bodies without an expectation that we will love the way our body looks the whole time we exist in it. Um, it can help us be more accepting of ourselves and other people 
and it can help us to learn and listen to what our body needs and wants. So I have here a little doodle of a belly that's saying food and grumbling, some cheese that wafts up to a nose, and just a hand holding a flower. I'm going to put this materials list here so we can see it. I wanted to talk about some ways we can practice body neutrality. That can look like matching the foods that we eat to our appetite. Sometimes we might want a big meal, I drew here a uh, burger and fries with a big slice of watermelon, or sometimes we just want something like a slice of toast and a beverage. Um, body neutrality can also look like being aware of the sensations our body experiences and adjusting as we need to stay safe. So sometimes that can be like putting a sweater on when we're cold or taking a breath or taking a pause when we're feeling warm or really excited or just need some air in our lungs. How our bodies will look or move will also always change and accepting this without needing a positive or negative opinion can help us lead healthier and happier relationships with ourselves and with others. Let's see how this can apply to how we make art. I brought here three pairs of scissors that I use in my making practice. Um, these three scissors all have different purpose. This one, these scissors are short and light green, and these are really awesome for cutting things like thread or soft things like paper. Um, these scissors here are really great for cutting uh, more firm things. Their appearance is more long and they, they have large blue handles. Um, but yeah, these ones are great for cutting things that are a little more firm, like cardboard or even some soft plastics. Um, and these scissors are really large and heavy and they're black and they have um, a really good, they're really well suited for cutting um, really thick things like thick yarn or fabric. Um, and so all three of these scissors have really different appearances and they have really different purposes. And they can't really do what each scissor does, each other pair does, as well as the other one, right? So this one is not that good at cutting little threads because it's so big. And this one is not that good at cutting big things because it's pretty small. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't make it a better pair of scissors. It doesn't make it a worse pair of scissors. It just means that they do different things. And what matters more is how we use them and how we understand them. Now that we've talked about how art can look like in terms of body neutrality, I wanted to get started on drawing. So when we're drawing self-portraits, we're really just drawing shapes and lines. So just how there is no one way to draw a mountain, sometimes a mountain, especially if we're thinking about like a cartoon or something, a mountain looks a certain way. But when we're thinking about mountains, a mountain can also look like this, where we have lots of jagged ridges and shapes, and they're sort of layered together to create a mountain formation. Right? It doesn't always have to be one certain way. This one kind of looks like a mountain. Let me start I'm just going to do a little bit of shading here to separate that part. But this looks like a mountain and this looks like a mountain and not one is better or worse. Sometimes this one might read more as a mountain or it might read even like a triangle with cheese on it. And this one might read more like rocks together and which is what mountains are but it can look like lots of different individual rocks um and not one of them is better than the other it's just different shapes and lines that are happening um so again nature relates to our bodies and they all relate to how we can look at or make art like i was saying before shapes and faces are Shapes and lines are exactly what makes up our faces and bodies, right? So a line that looks like this might be what somebody's eye looks like, right? We have an upward slope and then a downward line. And that looks like an eye, right? We've got ourselves a little eye here. Sometimes the shape can be just more round straight across. 
and then I'm gonna add the bottom here. And these are just examples. You can you can copy me or you can just watch. It's totally up to you. I'm just giving some examples of the different shapes we find on different features, right? I'm just gonna draw, draw a line through here so we can tell which one is which. And then some eyes, I mean, if your eyes are closed, you might just see the shape of your eyelids. And then some eyelashes, maybe an eyebrow there, whatever that eyebrow might look like. So we can see that truly, even though these look like three different um, eyes or maybe even three different shapes that the eye takes when it's showing expressions, they're just shapes. and lines right there's no good eye bad eye here there's no good face bad face here it's just shapes and lines and they just exist and that is perfect so i'm going to leave this here now as our example but when we're drawing faces i want to start today by breaking it down into different features as i kind of did here um was with just breaking it down into one feature that we were looking at in the face, which is eyes. Um, right now, I actually want to start, and this is where I would encourage you to start drawing. So I've found that the best way to draw noses is just from straight ahead because we, we have the shape that kind of is like a triangle. Most noses are made up um, of different parts and the parts that we usually focus on, or certainly I usually focus on, when we're drawing are the top part here, which for noses is called the bridge. And the bottom part here, which is called the tip of your nose because it's the one that sticks out the most when you're looking at from above. Um, and then on humans, we have usually two nostrils on the side here and they have sort of C shapes or upside down U shapes, depending on the person. Um, and then we have two ovals here that make what we call, I'm gonna draw an arrow here that sort of overlaps. They're called the nostrils. As you can see, this already kind of looks like a nose, right? We have our triangle shape and we have these funny little C shapes and then our ovals, our circles. Um, so that's kind of what makes up a nose. My nose starts off with kind of a narrow bridge at the top and then it's got a sort of a round tip at the bottom, kind of like that. And then I have pretty round nostrils, so they're pretty circular, like they're not ovals like this. Yours might be, and some nostrils might be more like this, which mine are closer to this one than this one. So I'll just put my name here, Kaylee. And this one might be somebody else. Um, and then my the parts that cover my nostrils, the external kind of look like that. They look sort of like C's that are facing each other, like the letter C. So as you can see here, that looks like a nose. I'm gonna make these a little bit dark so you can tell that they're the nostril holes. But what works for me to do is to do it um, without this line going all the way around. So I'll show you what I mean. I like to do it like this, with just this section of the line here. This section I ignore. So I'm gonna boop, hop over it, and then go back to my round tip. And then I'm gonna add the nostril on the outside, and then the nostril holes on the inside. And that's kind of what my nose looks like. Your nose might be more, less, might have a less round tip and might have a more pointy tip. So the tip might be something like this. Humans tend to be quite round. So even if your nose looks really sharp, there's gonna be a bit of a roundness to it. It's not gonna be exactly like this because that's more of a V shape, right? We want a softer sort of U shape. So your nose might have an even narrower bridge and again, I'm skipping over some of the line here. You can make it longer or keep it short. We'll keep both so you can see. And then I'm adding little shapes. And your nostrils, instead of being as round as mine, 
they might be more oval upwards this way because we kind of want to follow, follow the shape of the tip of the nose. So this is the example of the short side. And you can see here, we'll put a line through the middle to sort of see. You can see that the shape is quite different. I find that the longer shape here reads more like a nose, but it totally just depends on your style of drawing and the way you want your shapes to look or the way your shapes do look. So again, it's just about observing either your nose or somebody else's nose or feeling your nose and what those shapes might look like. Feel free to touch your face. If you have clean hands, that's even better. So another feature I'm going to draw, we've drawn our nose and our eyes or somebody else's nose and somebody else's eyes. I'm going to switch these up here so we have our practice uh, drawings available to see. This one I'm also going to move, but it's a good reminder. I'll leave this part that says shapes and lines out here for us because that is what we have to keep in mind. Now that we're started, we've drawn nostrils and noses and we've drawn eyes and their pupils and irises. Let's draw another important feature that lots of us have, which is our mouths. So the basic shape of our mouths is actually also an oval, depending on what the mouth is doing. So the overall shape is an oval here, just like how we have the triangle and we have an oval here. The overall shape is an oval. Like if we add little eyes here, we can see it's a mouth going, ah! so that's an open mouth. But within that oval shape, we have lots of different shapes. So again, we have the general oval shape, but then we have a line in the middle, often, which separates our two lips. And our two lips are usually actually really different shapes. So my kind of overall shape of two lips is my top lip has two big wide triangles. If you can see, it's like this, but we've stretched it out. Two big wide triangles coming together. Actually, kind of similar to the mountains we drew earlier. We have these sorts of shapes that go meet in the middle and they go out from each other. But again, just a connection with our bodies and nature. Um, so yeah, my lips look like two sort of wide triangles, the line in the middle to separate my lips. And then my bottom lip looks quite a bit like a half circle. So these are the three big shapes. Overall, we kind of have an oval shape, as we can see here, oval mouth. Um, but within that mouth, I have three sort of separate shapes. And your mouth, because I've drawn lots of different mouths and bodies, I can give you some examples of what your mouth might look like, but it also might look nothing like this. So again, not one better than the other, but just keeping in mind the shapes and lines. So there's lots of different shapes of lips. If your lip shapes are not here, that's okay. There's way too many for me to draw, but these are kind of some basic examples of what they might look like. Um, they can be narrower, or they can be bigger, or they can be um, wider or shorter. It totally changes so much. And they're all equally common, equally interesting, equally okay, and neutral. So. Now that we have these sorts of basic shapes laid out, so I like to start usually with the top lip, as you can see, that's how I started these three. So I'm just gonna sort of trace what I look like. And we have, my shape is pretty high up here, and then it's pretty sharp, like I said, it's a triangle. So I'm gonna do a little sort of triangular shape here. And then similar to my eyes, we have it goes up and then down. And then my line in the middle, a lot of lines in the middle of your lips are not actually straight. Sometimes they curve downwards like this to match the roundness of lips. Sometimes they're more straight because the lips can change in roundness. Um, mine's sort of halfway, 
So again, the neutral line here sort of goes down a little bit and then comes to meet the edge of my lips here. Um, and then my bottom shape, it is a half circle, but I'm looking at it closely and it has a bit of an upward slant like here. And then we're going to do the other half circle or the other part of the half circle, I should say. And that's basically what my lips look like. Again, if you want to add some detail, you can add, I have some texture on my lips. And it's just if you feel like picking out those shapes and drawing them on your paper. Um, and let's do an example with a little bit of shading. So I have this darker lip that adds a little bit of light and you can actually see I did it in these um, sticky shapes. Not quite as detailed because they're small, um, but I did this sort of light shape here, a little bit more dark here, and a little bit more light there. And it just helps show a little bit of um, dimension or just to show that our eyes are not or our lips, excuse me, are not flat, that they have more roundness to it and catch um, shadows of light. So now we have three basic features. Obviously, most people have lots of more. We have our eyebrows and we have our ears and we have all sorts of stuff in between like freckled and moles and hair on our faces. So we have these three features and they're kind of what we see the most when we're looking at our face straight forward. Um, and the overall shape of our whole face is also an oval or circle. And again, it can vary a lot, but this is sort of the overall shape. So we would have our forehead here and our chin right over here. So this is the top of your face and the bottom of your face. And it might not be an exact oval. It usually never is. Usually we have some sort of dimension in the cheeks here. Um, and we'll just add the label cheeks, but people's cheeks vary a lot in shape and size and placement even. Um, so this is the overall layout. I'm gonna draw another circle here just so we're not too crowded or oval. Um, and you can see this one's a little bit longer and less wide. Um, proportionately, this just means in relation to one another. Um, so the basic layout of the way we have these three sort of landmarks or moments on the face, they're actually laid out pretty interestingly. Our foreheads tend to be a lot bigger than we think. So our forehead is actually our um, like our eye line is actually about halfway across this circle. So just about halfway, um, maybe a little higher than halfway. Again, depending on the person, there's no better or worse option. It's just the way that they exist. So this is sort of where our eye line would be. So I'll label this here, eye line right there. Um, which actually makes our foreheads take up about half of our face, if you see overall with the head shape. But often our foreheads have some hair, we might wear a hat. Um, and let me actually, I'll put some little separate post-its on so we can see what I mean. I'm going to draw a funky sort of bowl cut shape. And I'm going to draw um, a cool hat just really quickly. Um, so you can see that our hats go quite a bit above our eyes or our hair might take quite a bit of space. I'm just gonna lift this so you can see better. And our forehead does not actually look as big as it is because we have these additional things that take up space. But if we're starting with this overall oval shape, then our eye line is going to be really close to the middle. Um, and then under our eye line, so we have the eyes here, the next thing would be the nose for most people. 
So we have the nose and from the eye line to the chin, I'll make a line here in the chin as well so it's easier for us to see. The nose line where your nose ends, because your nose begins right around this tear duct part here, this is where our nose begins, this part here goes right over here. Um, where our eye line is goes, the bottom of our nose, which would be the tip here, goes about halfway down the face. Again, it depends. I drew that just a little under halfway, but I'll call this the nose line. And again, that's where the bottom of the nose. And from this part here to the chin line, the mouth line, which I was drawing here, the middle of the mouth line, I'll just make that highlight here, um, is about halfway between these two lines. So we'll make another plotted line and I'm gonna call this the mouth or lip line, okay? So this looks a little bit silly with all these lines across this oval. Doesn't quite look like a face, but, and I'm gonna do this, I said earlier that I was gonna do it work mostly in markers so we could see the marks that I make, but I'm gonna do this a little bit softer with this dark blue pencil crayon so you can still see how these lines exist, but you can also see where I'm drawing on them. draw again this sort of oval and we have so let's see I'm gonna measure with my hands but you can actually make marks with a ruler I don't have a ruler with me right now but if you have one feel free to use it or feel free to use you can make marks like this like we have this is sort of guiding me as the halfway point um, you can use all sorts of different things to to guide your way through. This is just the way I like to do it and hopefully you find it helpful. Um, so we have this sort of made up line that I'm imagining right here and the eye line, if this is how big it is, if I do this, it's about the same. So if I do this, it's about the same distance, right? This is the same size here as it is here. So this is sort of where my imaginary eye line is gonna be. And you can actually use your nail and you can sort of see how it kind of makes a little bit of a shadow um, where you can guide yourself. So that's our eye line. You can maybe sort of see it a little bit faintly on the paper. And I'm going to do my eyes go up, then down, then up, then down. And there's sort of, again, we have, I'm going to fold the paper so we can see. Um, which is also something that you can use. We have this sort of symmetry line here, and we have the eye line right here. If you can see that shadow there. And I'm going to do the bottom here. Again, the shapes we've already looked at when we practiced. And we're going to add the iris and the pupils. I'm going to leave a little bit of light there because I actually quite like how the white center looks, but it can depend on how your eyes look or how your drawing looks. And then what I didn't add to this smaller drawing because there wasn't a lot of space um, was the eyelid. So I'm going to draw that here and I have these practice ones to guide me, but I also have my mirror image to guide me. 
So I'm going to add the tear duct again here. I just think it's a fun little detail. But again, the level of detail and the number of shapes we use is going to change from drawing to drawing. So I'm going to do the eyelid here, and the eyelid here, and then I'm going to do the nose, which sort of starts here, and the tip, which again, between the halfway line here to here. It's about halfway, not quite. Um, it's going to be, this is more of actually where my lip line lies. So I'm just going to do another line in the middle between these two. I'm going to do a line in the middle and you can fold your paper and you can sort of see where that middle line stands. Again, this, these lines are all something that you can make with your mark making tools or your things to draw with. Um, but it just depends on how you want to do it right now. I'm enjoying folding this paper, so we're going to follow up with that. So then I'm going to use this to guide this here. And that's a round tip. And then I'm going to do the nostrils in a C shape around here. And the nostrils in a little circle shape here. So this is my lip line. So I'm going to do again this. That's my mid lip line. This one right here. Um, and then I'm going to do the top lip like that. Again, inverted triangle, in, uh, curve here going down, curve here going down. And then another half circle, a little line down there. And this one is actually looking less like me here than this one here. Um, but that's an interesting thing about drawing big too, right? The way we map out our shapes and we arrange them, it's going to change. And we have the top here. So we said that the top would go, the eyebrow line, or sorry, the brow line would go between the um, forehead line, which is halfway through here. And it would go between this line and this line. So I'm going to do it here, which means that my eyebrow is going to start here, roughly. And you can use dots to map out too. I'm doing lots of different methods at a time, but if there's one that you're really liking, feel free to stick to it. But I like moving around through a different one. So like I said, my top goes up and then down. It goes up and then down. And my bottom eye does a similar thing, or eyebrow, I mean, does a similar thing there. And again, my eyebrows are dark, so I'm just going to fill them in in two different directions here. Cool. So that's the basic outline of the face. And again, in this one, I went and added the, the sort of part where my cheeks go in and out. And you can do that. So that's the mapping of the face. So if we're continuing with this with this large face, I actually want to draw ears. And we didn't practice the ears, but the ears can look like they go sort of out in little C shapes here. And your ears, let me get another, I'll get this scrap piece of paper. Or not scrap piece, but lined piece of paper. Um, for my face here, I'm ignoring these things here because I'm just doing a quick way to draw some ears. We're doing these little C shapes here and your C shapes might actually be larger anywhere between these two or around them. And then your ears might go more outwards or be more round when you're looking at yourself straight on or your ears might be more flat when you're looking at yourself straight on. Um, it really depends. There's, there's a huge way that ears can vary. And to do sort of simple ones, I tend to just do this and then maybe a line here, a little circle, and then a line here. So the basic shape of ears, if we're going back to how we were practicing these shapes, is an oval. And for some ears, it's a really narrow oval. And for some ears, it's a more round oval. Um, and then the little parts here. I actually, there's so many parts in the ear, I actually don't know them. 
So if you're interested in that, you can definitely look into more information. But there's the sort of um, fleshy part of the ear here, um, which I'm squiggling over. And then there's the more cavernous part of the ear, which will do sort of more larger lines. So the cavernous just means that there's um, an inward shape, like a cave. That's where that word comes from. Um, and that there's more of a shadow. So we're just gonna, again, I'm gonna ignore this middle part. We're not thinking about that when we're thinking about ears because we've already been practicing that right now. And I'm gonna do this narrow shape. And again, we do a line here, a little wiggle, but you can do ears however you want. And the ears, if we're thinking about the, these lines that we talked about earlier, the ears actually start at the top of the ears. This part of the oval um, starts also around the eye line. It can vary. Some people it's a little bit higher, some people it's a little bit lower, but the ears start around the eye line as well. And just for consistency, I'm going to go back with the Sharpie. So once you feel happy or you're feeling comfortable or wanting to go further with where the portrait portrait you're drawing is at, you can add all of these other things. You can use all sorts of materials to do it. Like you can bring in some of this tissue paper, which I think is what I'm going to do right now. But again, you can also do, you can add yarn or you can add color or you can keep going with the same utensil we've been using. But I'm going to just bring in a little bit of tissue paper just because I'm looking at it and it's a similar really dark color that I see in my hair. Um, so you can use that as a map to sort of guide. But I actually, maybe I will I'll leave this as sort of my uh, sideburns or the end of my hair here that goes that I'm looking at and it goes sort of between my eyes and my ears, which is where this is. And then I'm just going to add a quick little sort of messy haircut. And uh, my hair is quite short, so it does show most of my forehead line, but it won't always. You might have bangs or you might have a bowl cut or longer hair that um, goes onto your forehead, but mine doesn't quite. So I'm going to add that. And again, hair is a tricky one to do. Um, but we're just using the same skills of just looking at shapes and the basic shapes. And the basic shape of my hair is just sort of a half circle, but I'm adding the texture like this because I just, I want to add a little bit more variation in the way we're drawing. So your, your self-portrait can be lots of components. And um, hopefully if we're thinking about it in, in, the, in terms of just shapes and lines, we're looking at our bodies in a more neutral way, right? Because there is no good line or bad line or good shape or bad shape. We're just looking at our bodies in the same way because that is what we're drawing. So hopefully that can um, be an interesting experiment to see how you look at um, your features, but also yourself as a person. Um, so this is my hair. I think that's pretty accurate. I think that looks, I have a little bit of what, of like a dip in the forehead, which is called um, a widow's peak, which I'll write. It's W-I-D-O-W um, apostrophe S, widow's peak. It sort of goes in like that. My cheeks, they're a little bit rounder. So I'm just going to add that because this is just practice. If you're using a pencil, you could erase the lines and leave the ones that you like. But I'm happy to leave our process the way it is. And like I showed here, my chin is pretty round. So I'm going to do this here and do this here. And it kind of sort of lets us imagine a circle. So this is looking more like me. I'm actually, because I'm not gluing this down, I'm actually going to move these aside. I changed my mind. I'm going to add my sideburns like this. But I think if I had some glue or if I had something else to attach it to there, it would be really fun to make shapes. Like this could also 
be my eyebrow. Like the shapes we use for some areas look like this could also be sort of my nose. You know, the shapes we use um, repeat a lot across our faces. So it's interesting to explore how that might fit in. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this in a red crayon. Um, just so it looks more layered over. But my glasses I'm wearing are actually brown. They're sort of light brown and dark brown in different parts. And they have the shape on the outside is an octagon. So that means a shape with eight straight sides like this, sort of like a stop sign. Maybe that's why I picked red. Um, and you can see in this version of my eyes, I didn't draw my eyelashes here. I didn't feel like I needed to add that detail, but if you want to add that detail or any details that you might see on your face, go ahead. So that's the octagon. That's what my glasses look like on the outside. They do go over my eyebrows sometimes, depending on where my eyebrows are at when I'm talking or expressing. Um, and then on the inside, just around R is the inside of the frame of my glasses. And then I'm going to color that up so we can see the outline. And that's sort of what my, what my face looks like. Your session might look a little bit different. Your exploration might have gone a different direction. If you um, drew on red paper, maybe you chose some different colors or tools to draw with. If you draw on newspaper, maybe you're using your lips as a word, like oh, your lips are laying on top of words, or maybe you like me and you have lots of different things torn up or scrunched up, and you can use that to play with, like this could be like a flower in my hair, you know, there's lots of things where we can bring in our imagination, or like I was saying earlier, the way we observe and experience the world. But this is something that's ongoing. Like I said, it's something that I've done lots of times and that I'll continue to do because I really enjoyed thinking about thinking about things as neutral or things that just exist outside of um, my control. Um, but I encourage you to bring the lessons that you might have learned today or found interesting into your next session of art. Um, even though nothing is for keeps, it's really good to continue um, thinking while we make because like I said we think we make and we look all at the same time and I'm gonna clean up so I encourage you to hang around and clean up with me um, I really like keeping my um, materials tidy so I can use them again and I really like leaving my area as clean as possible so I can use it again and feel like it was a really respectful exchange between the space I was in and the work I did um, so yeah, I'm gonna clean up. Please feel free to stick around and thank you so much for joining me today. I had a really lovely time drawing um, and I hope you did too.